appears finally that there's some good news for Bollywood from the box office. Ayan Mukherjee's Brahmastra seems to be making positive news. He asked whether the film is good, bad. The most important news is the boycott brigade will have to wait for another Friday. In the meanwhile, Ayan, Ranbir, Alia, Auntie must be having a nice little smile on their face given the success or at least the early success reports that we get from the box office. Ayan takes us into an unbelievable world, a world of the supernatural. Obviously Ayan has his pulse reading or his pulse on meter in place. Today's tech generation, today's urban world is well hooked on to these uh, cosmic out of space tales where also it's a battle between good and bad. Where also the line is a divide between evil trying to conquer good, good trying to conquer evil. So Ayan is getting into that western mode where the niche cinema is coming and Hollywood has already set the trend and making news and making money. Unlike Samshera, where everything is in an absolute misty scenario, Ayan manages to get some amount of energy and fire, pun un unintended, into this story. Storyline is simple. Going back into a prehistoric past is the Brahmastra, which is divided into three portions. And Junoon, the representative of evil, played by Maoni Roy, is at retrieving these three pieces from the three lost places and possessors of each of these three parts. Film starts off with uh, they reaching out to Mohan, played by Shah Rukh Khan, who has an extended cameo at the very start of the movie. He holds one part of the Brahmas. And evil knows that he has a part of it. So how they destroy him and get possession of one of the three forms the beginning of the story. The second piece lies with Mr. Shetty, an architect played by Nagarjuna. Even before the protagonist of the film can get to saving him, Junoon and her two sub gang managed to overpower and retrieve for themselves the second piece. The rest of the film, two hours and 40 minutes, is largely dedicated to the retention, the power of the third piece that lies with Shiva, the protagonist, played by Ranveer. Ranbir Kapoor is in love with Isha, who he meets Max. Oh, how many times. There's instant chemistry, there's love. And in the midst of this is also the supernatural story. Play. And in the interesting narrative is also the story about Shiva having supernatural powers, which include a non heat non-conducting anatomy. 
which curiously takes him into understanding his own persona. And in the battle of trying to help retrieve the pieces of the Bamas, they reach out to Guruji, who is Amitabh Bachchan. And then the rest of the story is the clash, stunts, fights, very boring stunts, amazing graphics. The technology, the VHF, in fact, completely overtakes Ayan in most parts of the movie. Except in some very subtle places like when uh, Isha asks uh, Shiva, Kaun Hatum? And he very romantically in the Kapoor Elan turns around and says, Kya ho? This is Ranveer. As ever, Ranveer is oozing charm. And in the romantic role, he's a ten on ten. Interestingly, even in the other parts of the movie, it's a huge evolutionary improvement over what he was in some shape. Maybe the Ayan Ranveer magic works. Importantly, while on the one hand, the supernatural story is largely dependent on technology, and that's well done. Though in some places you see it's quite shoddy. You find also that performances from people like Amitabh Bachchan is far less than you would expect from an actor from it, like him. The Mohabbate streak is there, but nowhere near Mohabbate. The voice, the magic is missing. Each maybe. Coming to Shah Rukh Khan, first 20 odd minutes. Typically, Shah Rukh Khan, he's lost in the technology, he's lost in the stunt, and whatever little dialogues he has, he has. Come to Nagarjuna, I wonder why they chose Nagarjuna. I believe both Nagarjuna and Mauni Roy were terribly wrong casts in the film. I would have gone with personas who have a stronger voice. I would have thought the casting director would have gone for somebody who has a magical screen presence. And a magical screen presence pan India is not what Nagarjuna has. And he is no fair person, the Aida. So I wonder why he was doing that role. Very flat dialogue delivery, which is of course Nagarjuna's signature. And it's counterproductive in a role which is a cameo. So far as Malika is the main piece around whom the story is built, she has almost as much to do, or sometimes even more, than Shiva, the protagonist in the film. And you have a lady who's making faces, looks exorcised, and nothing more. So I think that's a bad cast. I would have thought somebody like Tapu would have done that role. I would have tempted Aishwarya Rai Bachchan to come and do that role. But no, that, that doesn't happen and you're, you land up with a Mauni Roy whose conviction is no good. However, the amazing screen chemistry between Alia Bhatt and Ranbir Kapoor is top notch. There is the quintessential Kapoor in Ranbir. There is that nice, contemporary, happy, loving Alia Bhatt, who's an actor of no mean talent. She acts within herself. She doesn't go overboard. And that's a wonderful thing for an actor to be doing. It's a mixed bag for me. Too long for contemporary audience. I would believe the film lacks soul. And somewhere down the line, the script gets too convoluted and uh, Ayan seems to have missed the trick with him. Maybe when he's doing the second part. The first part is called Shiva, so we don't know what the second part is going to be and I don't even have a clue whether the main uh, 
antagonist there is still going to be Shivard and Bhikkhupur. But we hope that he doesn't give us another 2 hour 40 minute film. It worked perhaps with Bahubali and KRF, but it's not going to work with the Hindi audience over a period of time. Please, Hindi filmmakers, realize today's audience attention span is reducing. Do not give us two hour 14 minute films. Give us movies which will last a bucket of popcorn and one soft drink. Nothing more. And that count as I recall and recognize contributions from Abhinav and Datu for reaching this out to all of you. And in the hope that you will give me your feedback on whether you like this review, whether you saw the movie, whether you agree with me, and if you don't, on what points you do to agree with me, both in content and in presentation. Hope to hear from you. And on that note, do go back to the theaters. If you needed a reason, this is a fair enough reason. At least go to a movie where there is effort, if not brilliance. I am, you have a justified winner in your hand, mixed bag, but amazed when it comes to the magic of Alia and Rangir. Long live that pair. Wonderful romance. Watch the movie. Thank you.